Got a bunch of items here today. Let's see what I've got this time. Don't forget to subscribe if you like mail bag videos or electronic stuff or repairs. Thanks for Patreons as well, having to buy things from mailbag. All my supporters, your donations are greatly appreciated. And this is nice. It's a Tetronics 50 ohm load. 5 watt 50 ohm terminator. I've been meaning to get some decent terminators because my existing ones are, well, a bit crap really. These are just some Chinese ones, you know. I have to use a T on it and stuff like that. and. They're not particularly good, I mean they work, but they're not ideal. I thought, well, I said, I'm going to buy the bullet and buy some Terminators, so I need to get some decent ones. I should actually test it and see what resistance it is, make sure it's okay. So let's have a look at this now. I've got a couple of comparison devices here as well, we'll look at these in a second. So let's do some measurements, check the input side. Forty nine point four ohms, that looks fine. Check the pass through, make sure it's okay, put it back on. Yep, zero ohms, that's fine. Interesting. Now I think this is actually isolated. Let's just have a look across here to here. See this? I'm getting kilo ohms across there. If I do it differently, hold on to this side and then that side. Yeah, because I'm, I'm touching stuff as well, it's not helping. So this G looks like these two sides are isolated from each other as well with these negatives. So it looks like it's not only a, a 50 ohm terminator across here, but it's also an isolator from here. You know, I've got 30 mega ohms there, like that. That's interesting. And that's always going to be touching, so obviously this is isolated from this. That's a floating ground. That's not a bad thing, is it? Okay, let's look at my generic AliExpress 50 ohm terminator. 52 ohms, so not perfect. That'll give you measurement errors. I've also got this um, 10 dB attenuator. That's 63 ohms <laughs> on that side. Let's try this side. This side's also 63 ohms. Hmm. Yeah, it's not great, is it? And pass through of this one is 53 ohms pass through, which is obviously where it's getting it from. So, obviously, being an attenuator is going to be a slightly different system, but yeah. So that's nice, that seems like it's looking good. Nothing wrong with it at least. Interesting, it's just like exactly the same packaging. I think it's on the same person. Packaging is identical. It is. This is another 50 ohm terminator. This one's rated at 2 watts. Elcom Systems. Don't know who they are. It's got some details around the bottom there, it's like a serial number or something around it. Let's get the multimeter back out again, let's have another look. Check for isolation first. Since the other one's isolated, this one is not, this is straight through. Um, let's check from the center to the tip there. That's a straight through. And to the shield on the outside, 49.5 ohms. So yep, yeah, that's good. That looks fine too. Excellent. Got two high quality loads. You can also see on this thing, it's got like a silver rings. This, this is actually silver plated brass, I think. It's definitely silver plate anyway. I recognise that as silver plate. It's nice. Ah, right. These are Fisher-like connectors, not Fisher. I think they're Fisher-compatible connectors. They're not actually made by Fisher, these are someone else. These are from AliExpress. But these are smaller, these are like mini ones. So basically what I was thinking of doing is replacing the connectors on one of my Solartrons. The official Fisher connectors are hard to get. I think it's an S104053 or something is the model number for those. But they're expensive and hard to get. And these are much, much cheaper, but they're also smaller. So I'm not sure if the properties of these are exactly the same. Um, you see it's five pins as well, so it's electrically compatible, at least in that regard. Let me get the actual connector here. This is a proper Fisher connector for the Solartrons. Right, this is what it actually looks like, and this is the one I've just pulled. Nine, it's not the same size. But I'm thinking I can probably swap these sockets around in one of the units. So I've got two units. I've got the 706 one, which is going to be my main Solartron, and I've got the 7075, which I'm actually going to be selling. But I've only got one cable, right? And with these connectors being so damn expensive, and this cable so expensive and hard to get, 
I'm not going to sell this with that unit, but obviously I need to sell the unit functional, right? I still have a connector on it. So what I'm going to do is swap these. I've got these little sockets as well. So I'm going to swap out the socket, install this mini one, make a new cable with this mini cable, uh, with this mini socket. So it's a very similar sort of format, but obviously not the same. Make it with that, and now I can sell it with that. So if I sell it with that, at least I'm trying to sort of honour the original system a little bit. Um, obviously dielectric may be an issue, I don't know. Um, spacing's quite close. 1000 volts possible, uh, maybe. I mean, binding posts is also an option. I did buy some binding posts, I've got them already. I showed those in a previous mailbag. So if this doesn't work out, I can just go to binding posts and I'll maybe use these for some other project later on. So I've got two sets, got two sockets and two plugs. If this doesn't work, I'll use them for something else. Stuff on paper. That's interesting. Oh, bit of paper. Let's have a look at this. All packaged. Yep. Looking after that, that's good. Do you like death point food packaging? What's a key on a set of tape with it? It is another terminator. Another Tetronix terminator. There's a model number. 50 ohm 2 watt. Let's check this one out. Okay, let's check the pass through first of the, the shield. Shield is connected. Center conductor pass through. Center conductor passes straight through. So center conductor to. Yeah, let's just try and get onto this thing and hold it. So center conductor to the outside. Should be 50 ohms. Look at that, 50.18. That's not bad, that's pretty accurate. I've now got a few terminators. Excellent. So the benefit of having an accurate terminator, like this one's the most accurate resistance, right, 50.18. And these were what, 50, uh, 49.5 or so, weren't they, both of these? So the more accurate the resistance, the more likely you are to be able to get a measurement on your oscilloscope, which is accurate for the device under test. All right, because it's gonna be assuming 50 ohm load, and it's gonna be doing calculations based on 50 ohms. Having a more accurate terminator will give you a better chance of getting an accurate reading. Scopes aren't 100% accurate anyway, I mean, they're, they're close. They're not super high precision in that way. I mean, they do okay. If you want something a bit more representative of what you're actually getting, then you need a decent terminator with a decent accuracy, like a 52 ohm one from AliExpress that'll throw the rings out by a little bit. So thanks to my Patreon to support the channel. Like I said before, coming to buy things mailbag. It's a test gear to fix, that kind of thing. Help me to entertain you. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon, there's links down below if you want to help support me as well. Here is a rather long cable. Hold on, let's get this out of the bag. What's that, 50 centimetres probably? Gonna be about that. There you go, it's a UFL extension. Now I've got this for my computer because I need to do a upgrade to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. Well, the upgrade is a bit of a hack, I suppose. And the original Bluetooth wire for the antenna doesn't reach. I haven't actually installed it yet. I'm going to be doing a video on that. I haven't done it yet. I'm waiting for the parts to arrive. And this is a rather long extension. I don't think it needs to be that long. That's just off eBay. Easy to get. Not too expensive. So we're doing a video on that Bluetooth upgrade. It's some 2010 Mac Pro. So it's the 4.1 model Mac Pro. Interesting. This looks suspiciously like the same one. That is exactly the same as the other one. Why did I get two? That's weird. <laughs> Maybe I'll pull from two different sources to make sure that I'll definitely get one quickly. That's possible. Sort of thing I'd do. But, hmm, they're identical. The packaging was identical as well. Makes me think they're the same person. Which also makes me wonder why don't I just send them together and save some money? Yeah. So as I was saying before, my 2010 Mac Pro, that needs upgrading for Bluetooth 4. So there's a little plug-in module you can get, which has got built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on the same module. And you can plug that in, it uses the mini PCI slot, and you have to plug a USB connection into it internally. You have to link it through internally with some jumpers and uh, extend the Bluetooth wires and stuff like that. So a bit of messing around, it's documented online, it should in theory work, but I'll be doing a video on that when I do it. I'm suspicious about what this is actually. I think I know what it is. If it is what I think it is, this is a bit of an annoying packaging system. 
and my rem knife needs sharpening again. Yeah. Um, this isn't quite the packaging. Packaging. This isn't quite the packaging I was expecting. Now I got some stick not long ago for doing something, and I didn't have gloves on. I thought, right, I better get some more gloves then. Anyway, so I bought some gloves, and I expect them to come in a box. You know, you get a nice little dispensing box, and you just pull the gloves out as you need them. Seems they've bypassed that. It's shoved in a bag. Just curious. I guess the bag is easier to post. Prefer them coming in a box though. Oh, here you go. If it's now I've got extra large, because well, if I'm China, who knows if the large is actually larger if it's a large for Chinese. So I've got extra large. So these are actually a little bit loose, but that would probably be fine. Because I've got some stick ones. So I was working on some precision electronics. People were commenting that I should have gloves on at least stop oils getting sort of circuit boards stuff like that, and they weren't wrong. And because I don't actually keep gloves in this room, I keep them in my other lab there. Um, I thought I'd get some for in here, but I was kind of expecting to come in a box. So I could like have a box stuck on the side of the desk, and I'm just you know pull some out. Those times when I need to get some gloves out if I'm doing something particularly dirty or same precision where I shouldn't be trying to keep my oils off the circuit board. The thing I got stick for before was when I was working on the Datron 4700. And I was handing the circuit boards. I knew I was going to have to clean them anyway, and I wasn't really too worried about it. But, but I got a few comments from people saying that I should have probably put some gloves on to keep my oils off the circuit boards to reduce contamination. And they are right. I should have been doing that really. But as I didn't keep gloves in this room, I was being a bit lazy. I didn't want to go out and get some from my other lab. I've got some from here now, but unfortunately they're in a bag. Not for too convenient, but oh well. Make sure to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Click the bell icon if you're not already notified. I'll catch you in the next video. Follow these instructions, click like and subscribe. Do those things. Bye.